is because we never actually tear the newspaper at all. That's just part of the, uh, the illusion. How many of you are starting to get sucked into my illusion already? Come on, get your hands up! <laughs> yeah, there, there are people in this room that, that think that they see me tear it because it looks a little bit like I'm actually tearing the newspaper. In fact, if you listen carefully, you can almost hear the fibers of the newspaper as they're being torn. I could have sworn that you actually really did tear, tear that newspaper. In a sort of a barehanded fuse welding process, I will now attempt to recombine and reassemble the hopelessly shredded pieces of the newspaper until they're exactly as they were before. Ta-da! <laughs> what you just experienced is much different than what I just did. Please believe me. Folks, it's just an illusion. Now in this case, is this illusion a powerfully deceptive one? Come on, let me hear it. Powerfully deceptive? But can this one hurt you? Okay, some of you are going to lose some sleep over this tonight. But other than that, this one can't hurt you. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Are there some illusions out there in life that can? Are there illusions out there that can hurt you? Are there illusions in your business that can hurt you? Much of what we perceive as negative is illusion. The circumstances, the events themselves, they may be real, but our perception of them as negative, could that be illusion? You ever lost a job and you were devastated and then you end up with a career that's much more rewarding? Has that ever happened to you or anybody you know? Have you ever had your heart broken so completely clean through that you wondered if you could even go an along another day and then years later you look back and you think, whew, good thing I got rid of her. Right? A good thing I got rid of him, right? Because, because the, the, your present circumstance is so much more fulfilling than that other one ever could have been. You, are you with me? I see lots of heads doing this. See, life can play some pretty nasty tricks, some of which turn out to be unexpected magic. Now, if life sometimes gives us the gift of serendipity and just gives those things to us, is it possible that you and I can do the same thing on purpose, even in a really bad situation? My name is Paul Fairholm. I'm the president of the Utah Assisted Living Association. And this is our annual conference where we had Brad Barton speak. One of the things that impressed me about Brad is he took the time to learn our industry and to learn what was important to us. And he applied that and, and incorporated it into his uh, speech that motivated us. It made us laugh, it made us cry. It made us want to do better, uh, and it was because he understood who we were. Let's talk challenges some more. How many of you like to get spit in the face? Raise your hand. How about if there's mucus involved? Okay, would you all agree that's a bad deal? Folks, I'm going on record right here. Brad Barton thinks that is a really bad deal. True story, several years ago at the end of a terrible, awful, yucky, rotten day where nothing seemed to go right. I was having a crash and burn day. Have you ever had one of these? And I looked over and that's when I noticed my son's got a cold. It was a really nasty one. Very apparent. Okay, let me explain. He had a big, thick trailer coming down out of this nostril and it was past his lip and dripping off his chin onto his shirt. As he spoke, he stretched that thick greenish corner that like taffy. You guys know what I mean. The other side was, 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 was moving. The bubble was coming in and out with his breathing. And I'm looking down at the face of this kid thinking to myself, whose son is this? 
I was in a nasty mood. And Jacob's saying, Dad, it's important. I've got to talk to you. And so I set my pen down, and I swiveled my chair around, and I said, what? And that's when my son reached up and grabbed me by the ears in a death grip. He pulled me down in. We're just about nose to nose right now. Did I mention I do not like to get spit in the face? And then real quick, he licked me up my left eye and my right eye. And he said, I love you, Daddy. Let go of my ears and took off running. Now I'm the one that's got slimy green snot running off of my face. And I'm furious. And he's racing up the stairs yelling, Mama, I did just what you told me. <laughs> now there are two people in trouble. He said, I licked Dad right in the eyes and said, I love you, Dad. And my wife yells down. She said, you did what? Jacob, I told you to go downstairs and look your dad <laughs> right in the eyes and tell him that you love him. I went upstairs in a completely changed mood and I felt great. I went and found my boy. He'd been hiding because he realized his blunder. <laughs> and I picked this precious little five-year-old up into my arms and I squeezed on him. And like five-year-olds know how to do, he's got all four of his limbs just wrapped around his daddy and he's squeezing back. And that's when it happened to me. I had this feeling that came all the way down through my soul, this feeling of gratitude and love. And I thought, how lucky I am to have, to have a little boy like this. But from that night on, he was always going to be able to be my little five-year-old Jacob man that licked me in the eyes one night and said, I love you, Dad. <laughs> Folks, it was a good deal. A good deal. Getting spit in the eyes was snotty spit, right? It became a good deal because life kind of just switched that thing around for me and, and forced me to look at it from a different perspective. And folks, I believe that that's one way to discover our magic. What are you paying attention to? Moving your team beyond illusions, past limiting fixed beliefs and self-defeating behaviors onto increased productivity. It's a lot of fun. I connect with stories, the poisonberry perspective, histopology, the dead chicken cannon, humor, keep them laughing, keep them learning, magic. Magic is a powerful metaphor. I reveal how magicians fool their audiences with mental conditioning and misdirection. Misdirection is shifting your focus from that which is important to that which is not. And mental conditioning, well, briefly just to, just remind you how how powerful mental conditioning is I have in my hand a card on one side of the card there is one single dot one dot the other side four dots once again in review three on this side six on that side how many of you confused now what did you see on the first side how about one just nod your head if that's true that would be everyone nodding their head that's what I showed you and then four dots on the second side and then three and then six dots and back to one dot all over again. One, four, three, six. One, four, three, six. And back to one dot all over again. How many of you are still confused? Raise your hand. <laughs> the trick should only work one time, folks. The point I want to make right here is all I got to do is say the number three. And I said at one time. And your brains immediately process three. You get a picture in your mind's eye of what three black dots might look like. And then you look up here and you see that. And, and it's one, two, three. Three. And I'm off to the next side. And you're left with the vision of seeing three black dots. Ladies and gentlemen, how many did I show you? One dot and then three dots? Or one dot and then two? Who created the third black dot, folks? Hi, I'm Mike Jackson. I'm the Director of Patient Account Services with Intermountain Healthcare's Accounts Receivable Division. Uh, we contacted Brad Barton about six months ago and made arrangements for him to actually speak to our Accounts Receivable staff and uh, took some time to, to talk with Brad about our core goals in, in the presentation. The thing that was very impressive in working with Brad is that he took the time to really understand our organization and understand our mission, our vision, our values, and the message that we wanted to convey to our staff. Uh, Brad did a very effective job in uh, letting our employees know that the way we make a difference to the patients and the customers that we serve is really by uh, what we do internally uh, as individuals not as an organization and conveyed that message very effectively to our employees. You learn to do. You do to learn. 
you earn to live. And ladies and gentlemen, live to serve. And you too can do some great, big, huge things. Let's go do some great, big things. You guys got magic. Thank you very much, Oklahoma.